everybody how we doing today in the Milford Assembly? Oh, I got one. I heard Beverly in the back and Pastor up front. I said, how we doing this morning? How many of you got to enjoy the extra hour of sleep or maybe Amen. staying up the extra hour yesterday? Like I say all the time, it's like a national holiday at our house. I enjoy it thoroughly. So anyway, we're so excited that you guys can be with us this morning. Uh, if you're joining us online, thank you for joining us online as well. We're just going to prepare our hearts this morning as we get ready to worship God. So let's just stand up to our feet. Let's just fix our eyes on the King of Kings this morning. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this place, God, that we can gather. Lord, that we can call upon the name of Jesus, the name that's above every name. God, there's hope, and it's found in you, Father. And this morning, God, no matter what we're facing, no matter the struggles or the battles that we're going through, God, Lord, this morning, God, we fix our eyes on you. Jesus, you are the author and the finisher of our faith. And God, no matter how dark it seems, Father, we know, God, that when we fix our eyes on you, that everything else around us becomes small. Father, that there's peace that surpasses all understanding. And so, Father, we just fix our eyes on you. God, be with us here in this place this morning. Be exalted on the praises of your people here today. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. of power, of sin and darkness, whose love is mighty and so much stronger, the King of glory, the King above all kings, who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder, who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder, the King of glory. The King above all kings. This is amazing praise. This is a failing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You lay down your life. That I would be saved. sing for all that you've done for me. Oh, yes, we do, Lord. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King of glory, who rules the nations with truth and justice. Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing praise. This is a failing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You for me. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy God. This is amazing grace. This is a failing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. Then I would be set free. 
and conquered the grave. I don't know about you, that's one of the greatest promises that we can live by and live out. Amen. As a follower, wherever you find yourself, you may be seated in the presence of God as we continue to worship God in every area of our life as part of his church. Jesus, Lord and Savior, moving mountains, making ways where it seems impossible. How many know without God it's, it's impossible, with, but with God all things are, imp are possible. Amen. And we stand on the promise that what Jesus has done on the cross, it doesn't stop there. It goes onward as we live out the message of Jesus because he didn't just stay on the cross. There's an empty tomb. He rose and he gives life to us that we can live out the message of Jesus wherever you find yourself. I am so, uh, I, I, I'm so honored and, and overjoyed to be able to to be able to share the good news of Jesus because of the relationship that I have with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And our time together this morning, as part of our worship, as followers of Jesus, wherever you are, if you know the Lord as your Savior, we want to invite you to participate as part of our worship in communion, of sharing the emblems. The Bible records that we're to do this in remembrance of what Jesus did. So I want to invite you uh, here on location and, and as well online, I want to give you a few minutes. If you're sitting maybe in your kitchen or your living room or sitting uh, maybe outside, I know it's a little cold, but you're finding some time just to uh, enjoy worship with us, I want to invite you to participate with the emblems of communion as we celebrate, as we give thanks. We're going to talk about that today, the power of thanks for what Jesus has done and is doing it in through our lives. And so we invite you, if you came into the, um, the space this morning, into our worship center, and uh, you received a, uh, a communion cup with a, a wafer attached to it, and you want to participate with us, if you have not, we have a host team that can get them. You can just kind of wave your hand. We'll make sure you get one. I want to pray for these emblems, but what I want us to do as we worship God is to give God thanks and praise. That's, that's part of our worship. We're coming together as his church to thank God in the midst of whatever you're facing because there's a greater awareness of God's love and it's the message of Jesus. It's the power of the cross that changes everything. So can I invite you? Can we invite you? As the worship team continues to play, I'm going to pray for these emblems and this wafer represents Jesus' body that was broken for you and for me that we could have eternal life and his blood that was shed, this cup, represents the greatest gift you can ever receive, the greatest love of all. His name is Jesus. He's the hope of the world. Can we invite you this morning as our worship team plays, as you worship together with thankful hearts. We're going to share these emblems together. First, the way for the cracker together. And then we're going to follow it by the juice, representing Jesus' body shed and broken for you and for me. This do this, the Bible says, in remembrance, a constant reminder of God's greatest love in Jesus Christ. And so I want to invite you in your time as we're worshiping together, share these emblems together, the wafer first and the cup of juice, and celebrate all that God is doing. Give God thanks for all that he's doing and what he yet has to do and will desire to do as we put him first and worship him in all that we say and do. Let me pray with you this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you. God, we thank you for the greatest gift of all, your son Jesus Christ. These are emblems reminding us of your body that was broken, the blood that was shed on the cross. Jesus, we thank you. Jesus, we love you. We worship you. For what we can never do, God, you paid the ultimate price. We can have eternal life, salvation in Christ. So, Lord, we share these emblems, remembering your body that was broken, your blood that was shed, as a constant reminder, not just on today for a Sunday worship, but throughout every day of the week, may we be mindful of your love and your grace and your forgiveness each and every day of our lives as we celebrate life, giving you thanks, first and foremost, 
We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So take me as you find me For all my fears and failures Fill my life again I give my life to follow in Everything I believe in now I Jesus conquered the grave. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Oh. Shine your light and let the whole world sing. Singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus. Forever, author of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Hallelujah, Lord. You conquered death and sin, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Lord. There's nothing that's impossible for you, God. Come on. Do you believe that this morning? We serve the risen King and the risen Savior. Before we leave this place of worship this morning, we just want to lift up prayer needs in this place. How many of you know that the cross was enough? That the cross was the final sacrifice. It was the final authority that Jesus gave us as believers. And all the promises of the word of God are yes and amen because of the cross. Amen. And so if you got specific needs, I just want to lift it up this morning. We know that there's some healings that need to take place. We know that there's there been some people that have lost some loved ones that need some emotional comfort in this time. And whatever your need is, take this moment and just lift it up before God. Because the Bible says that he knows our situation. He knows the battles that we're facing. And the best part is, is that he hasn't left us or forsaken us. And the Bible says that when we are faithful and when we call upon the name of the Lord Jesus, that he comes to our rescue. And so I just want to, uh, I just want to challenge you this morning. Don't hide. Just come boldly to the throne of God and say, Jesus, here's what I'm dealing with. Here's the frustrations that I'm dealing with. Here's the situation, God. I need your help. I need breakthrough in this area, whether it's finances or healing, maybe it's emotional stress, whatever it is. 
Jesus is waiting with his arms wide open. And the Bible says when we draw near, he draws near to us. So God, we come to you this morning. God, we all have needs. We all have questions, Father and frustrations, Lord, and we thank you, God, that you are faithful to answer us. Maybe not in the timing that we want, but the timing, God, that is the best for us, Father. You know that. And so, Father, we lift up needs in this house to you. We lift up needs, God, of healing. Father, we lift up, God, those that are struggling financially, Father. Lord, I ask, God, that you would come to their rescue right now, Jesus, that you would open doors that no man can shut, Father. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you remove any hindrances, Father. Lord, that you remove any stumbling blocks, Father, from our paths. Jesus, that your will would be done. Father, I thank you for complete healing, God, over those that are struggling with sickness. God, we thank you, Lord, that your stripes were enough. Father, the Bible says that by your stripes we are healed. And God, we thank you, Lord, for a speedy recovery over those that are dealing with sickness in their body, God. Jesus, any other needs in this place, Father, we pray, God, that you would meet them where they are. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would meet them, Father, and that they would know that they're surrounded by your presence and by your love, God. Lord, we lift up this nation to you as this is a heavy week, Father. God, we pray for your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you have your way in this nation, Father. God, that no matter what happens, God, we keep our eyes fixed on you because you are the author and the finisher of our faith. And you're the reason that we come here, Lord, this morning to gather and to lift you up, Jesus. God, have your way in our lives. Have your way in our lives. Jesus, soften us, mold us, shape us into your image, God, that we would reflect your glory, God. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Well, God bless you guys. You can be seated this morning. Miss Kelly. Good morning and happy November. Um, we're going to ask the New Milford kids to stick around for a few more minutes. You guys doing good? It's so nice to have you with us. And thank you for joining us online as well. And... Uh, and here in person. Um, a few announcements for um, this coming month is this coming Friday um, at 7 o'clock, all the women are going to get together and we're going to watch a movie. We're going to have a movie night. Woohoo! <laughs> and we're going to actually try to do it up here so that we can have the big screen behind us. And um, we're just asking that you bring your favorite movie snacks and. Um, and coming in pajamas are optional, yes. <laughs> Slippers for sure. And uh, we are going to watch the movie Love Comes Softly. It's the first of a series, but that's what we're going to start with the first one. It's, it's, it's awesome if you haven't seen it yet. And the men will be getting together Saturday, November 14th at 9 o'clock here at the church for their breakfast and Devo time. It's always a fun time for the guys to get together. And then uh, Puzzles and Pies, our favorite uh, November event, is Saturday, November 21st at 6 o'clock here at the church. And we're just asking that you bring your favorite pie, whether you make it yourself or you buy it. It doesn't matter. Um, last year we had, I think, one of every kind of pie you could even imagine. And then some that you're like, really? <laughs> That's a pie? Um, it was like a savory pie. So, yeah, I guess so. And um, open house prayer every Thursday from 2 to 7. Great time to spend a few moments or a few hours, whatever you, your time allows you, to come and just sit and pray and, and have a wonderful, wonderful time in the presence of the Lord. However, this month there will be no open, well, every November we don't have open house prayer on the Thanksgiving day. Um, but you can be thankful and pray around the table. And then next week, uh, Vantage Student Ministries will resume. Any junior high, senior high, um, come, invite friends. Um, they meet right after worship um, during our morning, morning service. It's a great time. I think they are having a blast. And Pastor Josh is leading that. And um, it's, it's a great time for them. And at this time, I'm going to ask any board members that are here to come on up.
reach you. The camera can see you. <laughs> okay. So much for a mask. Friends, family, body of Christ, saints, as many of you may or may not know, most I think do know, this month was Pastor Appreciation Month. And by the weight of these, I think you guys got the point. I'm weighing down the pocket here. So we uh, have collected, gathered, and uh, I would not only like to thank our pastors, but I would like to thank the Lord for what he has done. He has placed in our midst exactly what we need. When he says, I'll fulfill your needs, he knows what we need. And we surely need pastors of character, love, kindness, and generosity. And they have proven themselves over and over. And I would now like to go ahead and ask Pastor Chris if he would come forward. You want to hold on to those? I'll speak. You pass. Pastor Chris, this is from your congregation, and if you look in there, we decided that it would be a good idea to get you something for your musical talents. If you look deep enough, you'll find a guitar pick. We went overboard. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be able to use that for something else. There's a good chance. Yes, that's exactly. That's exactly. Yeah, you'll find more than a guitar pick in there. You'll probably find the other end of that guitar pick. So if you know which end is up, which I seldom do, you'll be able to figure that out. Praise God, and thank you so much for all that you do. At this time, I would like to ask Pastor David. Kelly, would you join him as well? Oh, boy. I got you guitar lessons. You got me the lessons and him the guitar. I got it. All right. Well, this has been passed on to you. I want to thank both of you, in particular Pastor David. What you have done in this short time has been miraculous. But then again, that's your job. <laughs> and it's nice that it's you God. follow <laughs> the God of miracles Amen. and that you have provided. You have taken his will and performed it in a very kind, loving, and wondrous nature. And you are quite a reflection of Christ. And so is your beloved. Mm -hmm. We want to thank you so thank much you. for all that you've done. We look forward to what's going to happen. And as you always say, we look forward to what God is doing Amen. and what he will do That's in right. the future. That's right. Thank you. And that has an awful lot to do with his equipment that he sends us. Mm -hmm. And you're a fine piece of equipment. <laughs> As well are you. Well, thank thank you. you so much. Blessings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You want to say something? Yeah. Um, Jump in there. You're on the mic. Tremendous. Thank you guys so much for that. It was uh, honestly unexpected, and I appreciate it. Yeah. I'm scared to even open it right uh, now. But thank you. Uh, thank you so much for it. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, open it. Open it. <laughs> so what you need to... Holy cow. Holy cow. I think he's excited. I think he's surprised. you got to be kidding me. I think he's surprised. I, I'm going to cry. So here's what happened. I think we got him. I think we got him good. Didn't we get him good? So those of you listening online as well as on location, uh, Word on the Street has been, Pastor Chris has been needing a new guitar. And uh, we've been working through that. And so between the worship team and a few conversations unbeknownst to him, and because of your generosity... Uh, we have been able to raise uh, some funds for Pastor Chris to get him a new piece of hardware here so he can continue doing what God's called him to do. 
and uh, bring us to a place of worship. And so we are so honored and blessed to have not just you, Pastor Chris, but your entire family uh, as a part of New Milford Assembly. Um, I, I can tell you stories and stories and stories. You know, three years ago, uh, I called this guy and their family. We were, in, we were out in uh, vacation, uh, and I said, I got to call Chris and Mary and see if they have a heart for what God is doing. And we just shared some, some God-sized stuff, and they said, when do we start? What do we do? How do we dive in? And right then and there, we just knew um, we have a very special family uh, as part of the team here at New Milford Assembly. So we're honored and blessed to have you. We love you. Um, and uh, as a result of your church family, hopefully you'll get something really, really nice. And then some, yeah. a few extra guitar picks, maybe a strap along the way. I don't know. Uh, but um, praise God. Thank you for your generosity uh, for what God is providing. Thank you for your generosity here as well for me and my family as well. Yes. We are so blessed. Together, uh, we are striving to be a more generous church, not just within these doors, but especially outside these doors uh, around our community. And we get to do that because of your generosity, because we can never, ever outgive God. God has so many resources that he wants us to tap into. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Honestly, I am humbled. That's incredible. Thank you, guys. I... I don't know what else to say. That's literally <laughs> speechless. So thank you guys very much. I mean, I feel the love. So before I, yeah, let's do it. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank Amen. you. Amen. again. How are we doing? Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to keep saying that here on location and online. We are so grateful that we get to be, when I say we, my wife, my family, Ben, Maddie, I know you guys are listening in. You should better be. Um, but uh, we are so grateful and thankful for um, the opportunity that we get to be a part of. Don't have to, we get to be a part of what God is doing uh, in and through New Milford Assembly. You get to be a part of what God is doing in and through New Milford Assembly. There's so much opportunity that God wants to do in and through us as his church. And so all I can continue to encourage you as you encourage me is that we'll continue to move forward faithfully and fearlessly, knowing full well God is doing even greater things. Amen. How many believe that? Even greater things that God wants to do. We had a, a great meeting um, this past Wednesday with our um, team. We've got 14, actually 16, including my wife and myself, of volunteer leaders that are diving in and saying yes to Jesus and all that you're doing, God is doing it through his church. Um, and you as well is coming alongside and saying, listen, we want to be a part of it. And our focus, or our verse of power verse, if you will, was John 14, 12. Jesus talking to the disciples and he's reminding them, hey, listen, um, what you've seen me do, the works I've been doing over just a few years in my ministry, you're going to do even greater things. Amen? How many believe that? And you can say that with confidence because further Jesus says, why can you do those greater things? Because I'm going to the Father. I'm cheering you on. I'm going to send my, my power and my spirit to help you. And so may that be that challenge and that charge for us as his church as we continue to move forward with gratitude, with generosity, with the love and grace of God that only God can give. And I, I can't believe uh, where three years, just over three years, have gone for us since uh, diving into the, the hot seat, if you will. I'm so grateful for a great uh, leadership team, a uh, fantastic board, um, just kind of helping us along the way, coming together and just talking and praying and sifting through all the things that God has called us to do. And it's just the beginning, I believe, of what God wants to do in and through uh, his church at New Milford Assembly. You've got the news events. Thank you for sharing all that good stuff. You can pick a few of those up in the back as well. And also our New Milford Assembly card. Here's a great card that we put together in our office. Grab a whole bunch of these. These don't cost you anything. They're all free. So you grab as much as you want. You can put one in your refrigerator, in your, in your car, purse, pocket, wherever. They're pretty handy. Um, hand them out. It's kind of the focus. And it gives a great opportunity for people to say, hey, um, what are you guys a part of? What church are you a part of? What are you serving? What are you doing? What is God up to? So you get to be a part of that um, as well. So I want to encourage you to, to be a part of that. Our puzzles and pies, I'm looking forward to that. 
Uh, you guys ever been to our Pulse of Surprise? If you haven't, man, you got to show up. It's going to be absolutely awesome. Uh, there's, man, the pies are awesome. Woo, man. Um, so it's going to be uh, coming up very, very soon. We're going to COVID-friendly that thing to death um, in a good way and make sure that everybody's happy, safe, and healthy, and um, we're full of pie. And we're building a really cool puzzle, aren't we? Yeah. So uh, it's going to be awesome. So I would encourage you to be a part about that as well. Thank you again for your generosity, church. Um, thank you for your love and your expressions of love. I love it um, when I get a thank you card. How many love a thank you card? I love it when I get a thank you card or a text or something that just reminds me like, hey, listen, you know what? Uh, people are coming together and encouraging one another. It's great to have a little bit of encouragement. How many love encouragement? Yeah, hopefully all of you in the room just love to be encouraged in some way um, and feel that, um, you know, what you're doing, what you're a part of, there's something that people are kind of sensing and seeing and they're very, very thankful for. And I think for us today, as we dive into a new series, it's called The Power of Thanks. Maybe I got a, maybe the big question is, when was the last time you said thank you to somebody? Well, we just did a couple of seconds ago, so I guess we're clear here. We can check that off our list. But when was the last time you actually said thank you to someone or thanks? And really meant it. Not like a flip it, like, hey, thanks, you know, whatever, you're walking by, a little air five or elbow, whatever it is. But when was the last time you actually took the time to say to someone thanks? Thank you for whatever it is that maybe they helped you with or whatever it is that they did. Uh, you know, I do uh, a little bit of traveling. Uh, I'm bivocational, so I'm, I'm kind of I move around a little bit and uh, mobile. I'm sure many of you are mobile because of kind of this, uh, the season that we find ourselves in, um, working from home and traveling, all these different things. And, um, you know, I don't know if it's because uh, this series has, has maybe prompted me to, to think through um, as I'm driving my car to be thankful when someone lets me in. That's, that's sometimes that's hard to find, but when people do that, that's a really good thing. And hopefully you do that, by the way. You're not cut in front of people and saying, oh, you wait your turn. There are people that do that, and sometimes we get busy, we get caught up in it. Um, I've done it, and I go, oop. But I think this series has kind of woken me up, like, hey, you know what, maybe I just need to pause a little bit um, and let a few people in and not be so crazy of a driver sometimes and get into certain areas and zones that I drive in, and all of a sudden it's like, it, there's a change. You guys feel that? You can be driving in the back country, you got all the time in the world, and you think it's Sunday and it's a Wednesday, and you're just taking your time, and all of a sudden you get behind someone who's doing like 20, and you're like, what in the world? Like, what's the deal? And they, you know, they're, they're driving slow, you're trying to get around them, or maybe you're on the highway and you're trying to get through a lane or whatever it is, or maybe you're in traffic and someone lets you in. Oh, man, when someone lets you in, I'm like, thanks, that's awesome. Thank you so much. When they don't let you in, you're kind of like, come on, what's wrong with you, right? We don't want to react that way. But sometimes we often do that. How many times are maybe you're driving or wherever you are and you're, you're, you're showing some gratitude to somebody else. Maybe you're letting them in or maybe you're letting them kind of cut the line in a good way or everybody better in the line where somebody steps out, I'll be right back and you just hold my place. Oh, hey, thanks. There's often times, many times, where we find ourselves where we have opportunities to say thank you, don't we? And sometimes we miss it because we're busy or we're preoccupied or maybe our mind's going in different directions or our circumstance don't look so good enough for us to stop and pause and say thank you to somebody. This series that we're going to spend some time in, in the month of November over the next few weeks is the power of thanks. It's that word thanks or thank you has a lot of meaning. Did you know that? It's not like just a flippant, hey, thanks, and uh, on the way we go. There's something bigger and deeper that I want to help bring to your attention, not just for us um, every day of our lives on a physical side, but there's a spiritual power. There's a spiritual connotation when we talk about saying thanks or showing an expression of gratitude one to another. How many of you like writing thank you cards? Maybe it's your birthday, or it's, a, it's an anniversary, or it's a special occasion, and, and people inundate you, and they love on you, and they pour, you know, just all kinds of, uh, maybe it's gifts, and conversations, and beautiful cards, and whatever, and you're responding back with thank you cards. Been there. My daughter graduated from high school, and we said to her, don't forget to write all your thank you cards. But dad, I'm like, no, don't forget to write all your thank you, thank you cards. Maddie, did you write all your thank you cards? Hopefully you wrote all your thank you cards. 
Because when you get a thank you card, it, it's an expression of gratitude. And, and this word thanks, let me just kind of throw out some, some definitions to kind of give you a little bit of backdrop of where we're going. Um, this idea of thanks, it really started like, like moons ago back in ancient Greece. Like there are expressions of gratitude. There are two words that kind of jump out off the page when it talks about uh, giving thanks. In this Greek term, eucharisteo, it's to express gratitude. It's the English word for Eucharist. It's this idea like here we are celebrating and giving thanks during communion as part of our worship. And, and, and for us, we use that term, that term of thanks or gratitude to give God thanks for the greatest gift of life everlasting. And so we use that term often here as a church and we're reminded of the greatest gratitude or thanks we could ever give God for what he has done through Jesus. This other word is called charis and it's the idea of giving grace or good pleasure. It's often used as the word just for thanks or just simply grace. You know, when we say thanks to someone or some situation, there's opportunities where this word thanks has such a powerful meaning. It has such a deep meaning. And the more that we recognize the power of thanks, the more that we can understand that when people are doing things in our lives or helping us through situations, most importantly, when God is working in our lives and we're allowing him to work in our lives, I don't know about you, that's a reason to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for helping me today. Thank you, Lord, for protecting me today. Thank you, Lord, for watching over me today. Thank you, Lord, for helping me understand how important it is for me to walk in obedience. Thank you, Lord, for all the things in my life. Thank you for my health. Thank you for my friends. Thank you for a church I can come and I can learn about you and we can worship you together. There's so much for us to understand about the power of thanks. And I, I want to just encourage you over the next several weeks as we dive into this, those here on location and online, every time you have an opportunity to thank somebody, thank somebody. Every opportunity you have, a, you have to say thanks for whatever it is, just that simple statement, thanks or thank you, carries a lot of weight. Someone may need to hear that. That's all they need to hear that day is that someone said thank you to them. Many times in my life when someone says thank you to me for whatever reason, there's times where I, I feel like I'm having just a, one of those days where the enemy is just bombarding and bombarding. And when someone says, hey, thank you, Pastor, or hey, thank you, David, for helping out, or thank you for thinking of that, or thank you for going the extra mile, it reminds me of something much, much greater than my circumstance. It reminds me so much greater that there's a bigger picture happening, and that's what I want to encourage you with. In those moments of uncertainty and circumstances that could be good and bad, God calls us to give him thanks in everything. And I want to draw your attention to this passage in 1 Thessalonians. It's one verse, 518, and I want to give you a little context about why Paul was writing what he was writing. Paul was writing to this early church. You remember from our previous series, Paul was writing to this church in Thessalonica, young church. Paul just launched this church on a second missionary journey, and so he dives into Thessalonica, and all of a sudden, there's, there's all of this um, persecution and adversity, and all these circumstances are looking very, very difficult, so much so, Paul gets kicked out, has to run out of town because he's being attacked. They want to kill him. So he brings Timothy in, and Timothy comes in and says, hey, listen, um, hey, listen, I know what's going on. Let me, let me tell you, Paul, what's happening. So Paul writes this letter back to this young church to encourage them to remind them how important it is to show gratitude, especially when things don't look so good. Man, it's so easier said than done, isn't it? To give God thanks and to, to be thankful in all things. Powerful statement. But let me remind you, when we give God thanks in all things, we begin to see so much more of, of the situation and begin to understand that there's something greater that God is doing in that moment and in your life and in the lives around you that changes everything. I love the context of this text in 1 Thessalonians 5.18. It says this, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I love this translation in the common English version. It says it this way, whatever happens, keep thanking God because of Jesus Christ. Big picture. 
Big picture. This is what God wants you to do. That, that first statement, I, I, I got I to gotta tell you, like, I'm thinking to myself, like, that's a pretty strong statement. How in the world can I give thanks in everything, in all circumstances, no matter what they are? Now, if you are a, uh, if you are a follower of Jesus or you're, you're, you're leaning in on, on your faith in God and you're on this journey as we all are, or maybe you're new to the Bible, if you saw that passage or that verse for the first time, you'd probably think, this is crazy. You mean to tell me I have to give thanks in all circumstances? Are you kidding me? Paul understood what it meant to give thanks in all circumstances, didn't he? The Apostle Paul was going through all kinds of persecution, all kinds of toil. He was shipwrecked. He was going through all things in his life, and he was finding ways to know how important it was in the midst of the highs and lows how to give thanks in all circumstances. He modeled that, and so here he is telling the early church how important it is to give thanks in all circumstances. He's commanding this young church to be, to be thankful in everything. Easier said than done, isn't it? And, and my thought I want to bring to your attention, just in that little passage right there, is that we are called to give thanks in all circumstances and not for them. See, we're called to give thanks in all circumstances and not for them. Like, like I'm not thankful for some of the things I go through. I can be thankful in them when I see the bigger picture of what I believe God is doing in my life and the situation and the circumstance that looks maybe grim or it looks tough and challenging and difficult. Did you know it's in those moments where God does his greatest work? Think about it. It's in those moments, those circumstances where God does his greatest work when we look beyond the circumstance and look to Jesus. When we focus our attention on what God is doing in the midst of all we might see out in front of us. You see, we're called to give thanks in all circumstances and not for them. Let me premise this. Some of those circumstances are a result of decisions Bad decisions of our own, are they not? So oftentimes we can go, oh man, look at the situation I found myself in. Thanks, God. Where are you now? That was great. And God's like, well, I didn't make that decision to be in that bad relationship. You did. I didn't decide to go on a spending spree and all of a sudden fall into a financial uh, calamity. You, you did. I called you to be a good steward. I called you to associate with people that you can kind of encourage and love on each other and build and stand firm in what you know and believe. I didn't give you that bad doctor's report. You did. Maybe you haven't been eating well. Maybe you haven't been exercising well. Those circumstances, you have brought them on yourself. There are moments in our lives, quite frankly, where people go, oh, I'm in the worst place I could possibly be. I'm like, my question is, how'd you get there? What, 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 was the, what drove you to that point? And, and so often we can revert back and kind of go, oh, give, God all, give, give thanks in all circumstances? Are you kidding me? Well, maybe if you just made better decisions and you thought through how important it was to take better care of yourself and to, to be in the word of God, to be around good people and to associate with good, genuine relationships and to be careful where your spending is and to be careful how you're operating daily in your life, Maybe he wouldn't be in that circumstance. But God has a way in the midst. Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good to them that love him. That means that you're saying, okay, yes to God. And you're called according to what he's called you to do. You're doing what God wants you to do, not what you want to do. So oftentimes we can be so caught up in those circumstances that we can miss the bigger picture of what God is wanting to do. It's, it's not about praising him or giving him thanks for them. It's about giving him thanks in them. When you give God thanks in those circumstances, he brings you through those circumstances. You just can't stop. Easier said than done? Yes. Absolutely. But see, when we face those challenges and trials, we have to know that God is doing something in the midst of those circumstances that even though it looks bad, there's something greater that God is doing in my life, in your life, maybe in your family, in your relationships, at work, 
where you're honoring God and knowing, you know what? I'm in a really bad situation. I'm in a bad circumstance. I'm trying to navigate through it. Let God work with you through that by the power of his spirit. See, we give thanks in whatever comes our way when we allow God to work in us to move us through as we build our faith around him. I can remember several years ago when my family and I said yes to God in the wave of just diving into what we believe full-time ministry would look like. Working a full-time job running a business and God pulled us out of that and said, I need you for bigger things, greater things. And we didn't know even what that looked like. And let me tell you something, the circumstances and the challenges after that decision was made were not easy. They got more difficult as time went on. They got more challenging as time went on. And I tell you, I wasn't thanking God for those circumstances. I wasn't thanking anybody for those circumstances. I probably was blaming a lot of people for those circumstances. But I was reminded that in those circumstances... There's a level of gratitude and thanks in those circumstances because I knew without a doubt, we knew without a doubt that that's where God was leading us. That's what God was moving us. That's what God was shaping us for and toward. And here we are today being a part of what God is doing at the Milford Assembly with you and those that are saying yes to what God is doing in the Milford Assembly is so, so grateful And it's in moments like that that we can give thanks and praise to God in those circumstances because we know there's something bigger going on. When we get caught up in the moment, we can miss the bigger picture and the bigger opportunity. Isn't that right? We can miss that big opportunity for what God has called us to do. When we made that decision, it changed everything for us. We moved. It changed our surroundings, our community. It changed everything. Every part of our life was kind of uprooted. And there were times, no question, that there were great opportunities and great circumstances that we knew were confirmations and affirmations of God being right where we knew we needed to be and God being right there with us the whole time. And there were times where we were like, oh, man, God, where are you now? This is rough. This is trying. This is challenging. There are situations in your life as you're moving forward and you're saying yes to God. There are circumstances that you're facing right now. It could be at work. And you're juggling through, how do I make this work? What is the situation here? And allowing God to step in and go, you know what? I'm going to give God thanks in this situation because I know God is working something greater in my life. And as you allow that to happen, you begin to understand that you're giving thanks in the circumstance and not for it. And that's where God does his greatest work. That's where God shows up strong. See, when we thank God for who he is and what he's done for us, we begin to understand there's something greater God wants to do in and through us. Mindful of as we partake of communion, as we celebrate the the, the sacraments of life because of what Jesus has done and and this this key word of giving thanks, this, this word that we so often use, Eucharist, the Lord's Supper, We're saying thankful and saying thanks to God. These are moments that we can remind ourselves in those circumstances to be thankful, to give God thanks no matter what. Paul understood that. He writes in Philippians chapter 4, 12 and 13, he says this. He says, I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound in any and every circumstance. I've learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. And then he says this, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Why can he say that? Because he recognized there was something in the midst of his circumstance that God was doing in his life that was far, far greater than what he was faced right now. His present circumstance compared nothing to the future hope that awaits him because he knew without a doubt that God was doing something special in his life, even greater. And the same thing is for us today. Circumstances that we find ourselves in knowing full well, you know what, that God is in it? I don't know about you, it gives me pause to stop and go, Lord, I thank you and I praise you in this circumstance because I know there is a future hope, there is a promise as I continue to move forward faithfully honoring God in all things. Give thanks in all circumstances. May I encourage you, 
Whatever you're facing this week, whatever you're about, there are situations in your life, circumstances that maybe look so, so difficult, so grim, so tough, so tasking. Give thanks. In that circumstance, not for it, give thanks in that circumstance and let God do what only God can do to help you work through that moment because that's what God has designed and desired for you is he wants to work in your life in those moments, good and bad, because he loves you. And there's a greater purpose that maybe you don't see right now. Take your eyes off the circumstance and put your eyes on Christ and let God lead the way. Paul goes on to say in this passage, he says, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. What I love about that passage, it's reminding us that there's something greater, something bigger. Something I I can't do, something I can't try to achieve on my own. Jesus already did that, didn't he? He already paved the way. And so Paul is encouraging the believers that, that it was God's plan for them to experience his power in the midst of every circumstance that they faced. God wants to work in your circumstance no matter what it is. He wants, to, he wants to dive in. He wants to roll up his sleeves. He wants to help you no matter what it is you're facing today. You could be battling a relationship issue that just looks really difficult. It's very toxic. God wants to step in. He's just like, listen, there's something I want to work in your life right now if you allow me to work in your life right now so you can move through it and keep moving in the direction that I've called you to move. Don't get stuck there. Don't get stuck there. When you allow God to move in your life, he changes everything, doesn't he? Think of experiences and maybe where you've been and where God has brought you to this point. Thank him. The fact that you're here or you're listening online, you're taking time to go, hey, you know what? I need something from God today. I need some kind of a special awakening and anointing of God's presence to remind me how big God is. And to be thankful and to give him praise. We could probably go around this room or we can get call-ins for just stories of testimonies of God's amazing love and God's generosity and his gratitude to you. But so oftentimes we forget that, don't we? We don't write that thank you card to God or to anybody. We just keep moving like, whoo, this is great, awesome. It says we got to pause and give thanks. In all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And so the thought is that we can be thankful in all things when grateful for all things in Christ. See, see, we can learn to be thankful in all things when we learn and understand how important it is to be grateful for all the things God has done already. Stop. Pause. Write that thank you card. Give thanks to God in that moment, no matter how good or bad it may be, knowing full well that there's something greater God already did. I don't know about you, that gives me joy. Does it give you joy? It gives me joy. It gives me peace to no matter what I'm facing with. If I know I'm moving in the path, God is moving me, and I'm doing the very best I can to follow God's lead and allow his spirit to work in my life, No matter what situation or circumstance I find myself, good or bad, I can say, Lord, I'm going to give you thanks through it because I know there's something that I need. There's there's a work in progress in me that you're working on. I just have to allow you to do whatever you want to do. Church, allow God to do whatever he wants to do in your life to just purge you and refine you and to give you a, a, a place where you can understand that God's is greater. God's purpose and plan is so much greater than maybe what you're faced right now. Maybe that relationship needs to be disconnected or reconciled. Maybe that, maybe that situation mirror on the home front, there are, there are relationships that are going all different directions. God says, you know what, it's time to put that together or it's time to move on. Stop beating yourself up. Stop allowing situations in your life to override you and miss everything that God wants to do in your life. We can be thankful in all things when grateful for all things in Christ. Many years ago, 2006, it was so crazy. I was running through some, uh, some, some material back when I was in um, uh, my graduate school at seminary. 
And um, I was thinking through this message and this whole series about the power of thanks. And I was, re- I was recalling, I was like, I remember I, 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 I preached a message. It was one of my first messages um, in a class I took um, in seminary. It was a preaching class. And I was nervous and scared to death um, because here I am amongst um, all these students and faculty. And um, we had to preach messages. Um, and I took all these different expository preaching classes and stuff like that as part of my, um, my, my line for my master's degree. And um, this one message, it was so funny. Um, here we are, we've moved out, we've transferred out into a whole new area, new culture, new everything. And man, we were like, God, there are things that we know you were, you were going to do in our lives. We just have to be open to it. So here we are diving into school again. I had already graduated probably, I don't know, uh, 10 years prior. I'm back in school again going, oh, shoot, i got to get a laptop. I gotta, there's no more pen and paper stuff. This is all like crazy. So here I am learning the whole new dynamics of school life in a master's level. And so I'm in this class. It's a preaching class. And, and uh, the, 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 um, the, um, uh, the, the scriptures get passed around the room. Like, okay, you're preaching on this, you're preaching on this, and they start handing it out. So here comes this thing. I'm like, Oh, Acts chapter 5. Okay, cool. Let me dig into that, find out what that's all about. And uh, so the more I dug into it, I'm like, wow, this hit me like straight on. Acts chapter 5 is, you got to read the passage in Acts chapter 5 because it's a powerful, powerful story. Start in verse 12, go all the way to the end of verse 41. Here are the apostles. The church is scattering, and they're preaching the good news, the message of the kingdom of God, this message of salvation, and people don't like it. It's getting very uncomfortable. And they're preaching hellfire and brimstone, man. They're preaching the kingdom, and it's awesome. And in the midst of their circumstance, everything's going great, and people are getting healed, and the church is growing. It's awesome. Not for everybody. Jewish leaders of the day kind of rallied around. They were getting jealous because all this big fanfare and popularity in the church is growing. They're getting nervous. So they bring them in and they say, hey, no, 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 no. We told you, you, you can't be preaching about this Jesus, this king. You can't be doing They arrest them. Well, God had something to say about that, didn't he? Read the story. It's awesome. In the middle of the night, God has a way. Jailbreak. Boom, they're out. And so where do they go? They don't go hide. Their circumstance, as bad as it looked being in jail, they, they were free. God just opened up the doors, and where did they go? They went back out into the temple and kept preaching. They didn't care. They didn't care about their circumstance, good, bad, or different. They just kept preaching. So they went looking for him, and they found him again. They brought him back, and they said, oh, time out, Peter. All your crew, you got to stop this nonsense. What was their response? I'll give you just a snippet of it. We have to obey God, not man. We're called to a higher purpose. We're called to a higher calling. We're called to a higher standard of knowing full well what we've seen, what we've observed. We can't stop talking about the kingdom of God. And a leader in the Sadducees, Gamaliel, steps in, Jewish leader, he kind of intervenes and he says to him, hey, listen, um, hey, let's just get this straight because um, we might have a problem here. He's telling the other Jewish leaders, hey, listen, we have a problem here. Like, um, there are people before these guys that were teaching and preaching something else and they, they died and they dissolved and they went on. But let me just remind you, as he's telling his Jewish friends and leaders, if these people are real, this is really happening, this is the real deal, you're going to be fighting God, not man. You're going to have a bigger problem on your hands. But what I love about the verse, verse 41 is the kicker for me. They bring them all back in, and all of a sudden they're like, hey, listen, um, we've told you once, we've told you twice, we tried to lock you out. Apparently you got out. Must be your God, right? So all of a sudden, here they are. They bring them back in, and they say, hey, listen, you got to stop doing this. And they let them go. They flogged them, whipped them, beat them for a little bit. And they released them. And you know what their attitude was? Awesome! This is awesome! What? In all circumstances? Are you kidding me? They just got arrested. They were ridiculed. They were beaten. They were persecuted. They were thrown out of the temple a couple of times. And then they leave and they're going to go, hey, we're just praising God because we were counted as being a part of something greater and bigger, the kingdom of God. Church, that's us today. 
No matter what your situation or circumstances face, there is something greater God is doing. It was a constant reminder as I was laying out that message. November 1st. Isn't that interesting? I had it dated November 1st, 2006. 14 years ago. I preached that message in a big room of a bunch of people scared to death. But I was preaching that message more to me than I was to them that day. I really was. Because I was reminded of where I came from and where God was bringing us in the circumstances and situations. I'm like, I don't even know, but I know without a doubt that's where God is leading me. That's where God is leading my family. See, church, when you know without a doubt God is moving you into a season or a space where there's circumstances that look so, so crazy, know full well that God is with you. When you know God is in it, Anybody that comes against attack against you, they're fighting against God, not you. Good luck. Good luck. And it's in moments that you find yourself here today, as you're thinking through, like, my circumstance, whatever you're going through, good and bad, knowing full well that if God is in it, and you're allowing God to take full reign and control, there's nothing that God won't do as you allow him to work in you, in the circumstance to help you get through that moment as you learn and grow and as God continues to develop you, as he's developing me, as I learn, we learn, as we grow, we grow together, knowing full well that God is doing even greater things. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28, I love this. We were just singing about this unshakable kingdom. I love it. It says, therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe. That's giving thanks. We are a part of, you are a part of an unshakable kingdom. Like this world we live in, shakable, perishable. The kingdom of God, unshakable. I don't know about you, that's a reason to give thanks and be grateful, knowing full well that as God is working in my life, as God is working in your life, as God is moving his church forward, we can be grateful in an unshakable kingdom, knowing full well that no matter what you're faced with, no matter the circumstance, God is greater, and God will work all things for his purpose and glory and for your good as you trust him and seek him with all of your heart. See, we're called to give thanks in all circumstances with a greater picture in mind. His name is Jesus. A greater kingdom in mind that is unshakable. I don't know about you, I've been a little bit rocked back and forth with this whole season, seven months into this mess. It can destroy some of us, can it? It can rock all different types. It's rocked the economy, our communities, all kinds of cultures all around us, everything. But it hasn't and will never shake the kingdom of God. God is in charge. God is sovereign. What's going to be happening this week? I tell my wife all the time, God's in charge. Whatever God wants to do, it's up to him. I believe God before man every time. I'm going to allow God to do greater things in my life before I listen to anyone tell me otherwise. God is on the throne. He's still on the throne. And he still reigns supreme above and beyond anything or anyone. We can be thankful in all things when we look beyond the circumstances and look to Christ. Look beyond your circumstance. Whatever you're facing this week, look beyond it. Allow God to work in your life. When he works in your life, he works through the situation to greater things that God's called you to do. Saying thanks is a big deal. It means a lot. It carries a lot of weight. Maybe this week you've, you've got to maybe text or someone or call someone or write someone a thank you card just to say thanks. Maybe it's your turn to sit back and be mindful of maybe someone in your life or a situation that maybe happened. It could be a week ago, a month ago. It could be even a year ago. Maybe you never got to it. And you need to. But let me first encourage you by writing a thank you card to God. Have you ever done that? 
I haven't. Until now. I wrote a thank you card to God. And as I started writing a thank you card, I was like, oh. I ran out of room. And I'm not bragging, I'm just telling you, I serve a big God, a generous God. I serve a God who loves me and is gracious, and so do you if you know him. And as I started to write this thank you card, I, I started to jot down all kinds of things. I'm not going to read this between me and God. Your thank you card is between you and God. But I put this in my Bible as a constant reminder that whatever circumstances I go through, I'm going to go back to that thank you card. And I want you to, too. We're going to give you a little assignment. If you noticed when you walked into the church today, back in our cafe entry space, there's a table. And it's littered with thank you cards. And for $4.99 each, you can each have them. Oh, Aren't they so expensive? Holy cow. They're free, by the way, because of your generosity. But I want to invite you to grab a thank you card today. Through the entire month of November, there's going to be a table back there in that space littered with thank you cards. And I want to encourage you to start with giving God thanks first. Write a card to God. Put it in your wallet, put it in your purse, hang out in your refrigerator, your visor, wherever it is, that spot where you know it's there, don't lose it. Because in your worst day, in your most difficult circumstances, you're going to want to pick up that card. You're going to want to pick up that card. And be reminded of how grateful you are in the midst of your circumstance of what God is doing in and through it as you allow God to work in your life. So I want to invite you, before you leave today, go to that back table, grab a thank you card. You might need to grab two. You might need to grab one for God first and write out a thank you card today. When you go home today, write a thank you card out to God. Grab a cup of coffee. If you're online, go grab some thank you cards out of your box or wherever you have them in your house or go hit CVS. Or you can come here. They're free. <laughs> write a thank you card to God, expressing your gratitude with sincerity, with heartfelt thanks because of what God has done in Christ. Don't forget that. If you forget that, you miss everything. And then you can't Give thanks in all circumstances. In order to learn to give thanks in all circumstances, you have to remember what Christ has done for you. And that deserves a big, hearty thank you. Not just today, but every day. I want to invite you to fill out a thank you card to God today. And if you have to grab an extra one and you're thinking of someone you need to say thank you to, write that card out and send it. There's envelopes included. No stamps, but envelopes included. May I encourage you to write a thank you card to God and to be thankful for all that God has done and is doing in and through your life because it doesn't stop here, right? When we say thanks to God, it's a constant reminder of what God is always doing when we allow God to work in our lives. It only stops if we say, okay, God, thanks for that. I'll check in with you maybe next week, and if there's something I need, I'll let you know. God's like, no. I'd love to be a part of every part of your life because I have so much I want to show and give and help and instruct and lead you and empower you. It requires a heartfelt gratitude of thanks to God. See, we're called to give thanks in all circumstances and not for the circumstances because we know God is greater and we can be thankful in all things when we look beyond those circumstances and look to Jesus Christ, who makes all things new, provides greater opportunities for you to experience, no matter what you're faced with, good or bad, when you allow God in, he does his greatest work. He does his greatest work. And he's working on you like he's working on me. He's working on his church when we allow God, in all circumstances, to work in our lives as we give him thanks. I want to pray this morning, I want to invite you for a time of Thanksgiving. This whole month is kind of like Thanksgiving, right? We're preparing for Thanksgiving and whatever your COVID Thanksgiving looks like. We're going to be sitting around talking, meeting people, friends, family, whatever, and giving thanks, giving thanks to God. 
I can't think of a better place to start than saying thanks to my Heavenly Father for the greatest gift I could ever receive in Jesus Christ. And the gratitude that we display in Christ, it spills out. Did you know that? When people say, how in the world can you be so thankful in this moment? Guess what? That's your lead. Let me tell you about my relationship with God through the person of Jesus. I can give thanks because there's something bigger happening in my life. And you get to share that with somebody. Don't hold it in. Give it out. And give thanks for all that God is doing. And I don't know what you're faced with this week, but I can guarantee you one thing. I know someone who does. He knows what you're about to hit on Monday morning. He knows what you're about to hit as soon as you walk out this door. And he calls you to give thanks in all circumstances, knowing full well God is doing greater things as he teaches us and helps us grow closer to him because he wants to ever so grow closer to you in relationship. I want to pray with you this morning. And maybe you've been serving God for a long time, and maybe you haven't. Maybe you're on the fence with the whole God thing and the person of Jesus and accepting him as Lord and Savior of your life. The Bible says, accept who Jesus is and confess in your heart, and you'll be saved. It's that simple. Saying yes to God. Saying, Lord, thank you for new life. Can I invite you this morning, here in this room and online, If you don't know the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, today could be your day to give God thanks for salvation in Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, I thank you and we praise you for your love for us with gratitude and a heartfelt praise, God. We are so, so thankful for all that you have done in my life, in your church, in the lives, Lord, that are are coming to you and calling out to you in faith. But it doesn't end there. As we continue to grow and to walk in faith with Jesus, God, would you continue to show us greater things as we continue to show our gratitude of thanks to you first because you first loved us. I pray for those that don't know you as Lord and Savior that today would be their day to accept you as Lord and Savior, to call on the name of Jesus, to believe in their hearts, to begin a new life, walking with gratitude, with thanksgiving in their hearts and their lives, not just for them, but for those around them as we share the good news of Jesus with a grateful heart. We love you and we thank you. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we just stand up to our feet as we begin to worship this morning? the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who Jesus, I'm 
credit to me and that's my beautiful wife because as a minister if you know anything about church stuff you have to have a supporting spouse to deal with the kids to deal with everything so that you can do what you need to do so honestly she deserves just as much if not more thanks for this place than I do so <laughs> babe I love you guys don't forget to pick up a card in the back take what the pastor said today leave this place thankful Reach out to someone maybe that needs a note today. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful week. If you need prayer for anything, please don't hesitate. Come forward. We'd love to pray for you. And go be a light this week. Amen. God bless you.